When I was a little boy, my grandfather was a farmer. Every few weeks during the winter, we woke up before dawn to offer up several pigs for the bushery. The bushery was a joyous time for my family and friends to come together, share stories, catch up on news, and prepare the pigs for the butchers. Every part of the hog was used. The spoils of the bushery kept us fed through the lean times, and we were grateful for our gifts. Not just good food, but good times. You know, the Louisiana way. Come and join me, Chef John Falls, as we savor a tasty culinary tradition in the bushery preserving traditions. Our bushery starts before the sun rises. Fires are lit, water is brought to a boil, and hot coffee is served. As family and friends gather, a special prayer is said for the butchers. The blessings are not just for the people, but the animals as well. And finally, the bushery begins. All right, guys, how are y'all doing? Excellent. Wonderful. Huh? Wonderful. And, uh, and, and Phil, now where did you come in from? Chicago. And I know Troop is from Downsonville, around the, right around the corner. Darryl. Darryl, Louisiana, that's where he's from. Good sausage makers here. Now, what are we doing? What are we making here at this table? And do we? And I uh, do and smoke sausage. sausage. So we're gonna do the two different uh, uh, two different groups of sausages, very typical in Louisiana for, from a bushery. And now we're using, uh, I guess, just a good uh, pork shoulder. Or awesome whatever. from an awesome ball. Now this is from an awesome ball hog. Now what's the seasonings here? We salt, making? black pepper, garlic. Now this is a granulated garlic. Cayenne. Cayenne pepper, beautiful. Now what is this? This is a nice the pink. pink salt. Now this is a curing salt and it just kind of keeps the sausage nice. Not too much cure in it. Right. What is this for? Is this flavoring or what? That is flavoring. Now, you, I told you butchers you couldn't be drinking on the job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's go ahead and before we season it, talk about the grind. On doing is a large pork sausage. Three quarter and grind. Three, and, and, and it comes out of that plate right there. If you look at the plate on the front of that grinder, it's got three quarter inch holes, and of course the casing that we're going to be using. Pick up a piece of that casing for us. This is the beef middle casing. That's about 55 millimeter, and we also have for the smoked sausage a different uh, size tip because that's a tw about a 32 millimeter pork casing. That's beef casing, and that's going to be the smoked sausage, right? So we're going to yes. put. We're going to. You can see how much smaller that is. Now we have uh, before one more casing. By the way, I forgot oh, about. Yeah. Now that's the stomach of the pig, right? Yes. So that will get filled with different meats and seasonings here. So what we have here now again is the, the grinder with our three quarter inch plates and we have a nice uh, four blade in there. So can you go ahead and turn that on? I need a sheet pan. Now, Phil, how long you been making sauce? Oh, off and on, uh, primarily uh, since I got into the food industry, about five, six years. Now, you're from Chicago originally, right? Yes. Now, how did you get all the way to Louisiana from Chicago? Oh, just uh, by by word that there's something kind of cooking going on. <laughs> I'll travel anywhere to do some cooking <laughs> with pigs. <laughs> well, good. Well, this was a great call. We appreciate it. Cut it, cut it off, got a little bit more to go. Okay guys, our grinding has been done. We have our two great grinds. We have the Undoer grind and we have our smoked sausage grind. They're all from the same pig, all from the same pork, same fat content. Now we have to go ahead and stuff it. So we're gonna do the Undoer first. And that's, uh, and, and uh, Troop, let me see that grind so everybody can get a good look at it there. See that nice thick 
grind right there, really, that's a, a three quarter inch, so go ahead and throw it on in there. Now the undue casing, as we mentioned, is a little bit thicker casing, it's the beef casing. And the beef middle casing is a lot thicker, it's 55 millimeter. Yeah. So you open your, your undue casing like that, you get a little water in there, like that. And then you kind of get on to the thing and they'll slide on that. So you can slide with your hand right there. Yep. Just slide it on in. I'll slip my pan under and then you can go ahead and start cranking um, and kind of move it on down. And I, I hold the end so I can get a nice tight fit on that case. And now you can go, go with it. You can go ahead and turn. And the undoing, uh, you want to be about a foot to a foot and a half in length and then you stop it and you uh, squeeze and, and this is a hard case in the break and go ahead and just keep on going and you got a nice grind and here's your um, here's your undo it right here all right now the uh, undo it casing is filled and you can see the size of it with that 55 millimeter casing now we're going to go in with the smoke sausage so let's go ahead the grind is thinner and you'll remember that nice grind go ahead and fill that up and let's get a big handful of it just to kind of show and then again on the uh, this is the port casing right here. This is the port 20, this is about a 32 millimeter case. Oh, you got the water in it? Already. And then we'll go right on to it. And again, same thing. Just keep on pushing it on in. Okay, that's it right there. Now you ready to roll? Ready to go. Okay, let's go. And uh, Troop, what we're gonna do here, make a circle, okay? Just make a circle right there like that. Just keep it going. We'll put a little pressure on it. Just turn it around from And the, you see the size of that? And let, the, let it feed itself. Just turn it into a nice big, a nice big circle. Just keep on going, just hold a little pressure on it. And you can see, and you can stop right there. Now, do you have a, a little knife here? Uh, Y'all got a knife? Right, there you go, right there, there go. okay. Now, so what we have is the undo it, casing fill, same meat going into the, the uh, 32 millimeter sausage casing. So we have our three sausages. We have the, the smoked sausage, this is also a fresh sausage. If you don't smoke it, it's just gonna be a nice fresh you can cook. This is your andouille, and this is your pan. So the three great sausages of Cajun country, and y'all just made them right off of the pan. Huh? There's gonna be some good eating. There's some good, good eating. We're gonna go to the smokehouse, y'all ready? Yeah. Huh? You can take on off. We can take that to the smokehouse and we'll smoke it. We'll clean this up. Thank you. I'll see y'all down there. Okay? All right. Okay, we're walking up to the boudin tables, one of my favorite tables right here. And we're making two different boudins today, right? That's correct. We're making the red boudin and the white boudin. And y'all, Hip is uh, here from Chicago. Yes, sir. Now, now, now what brought you all the way down just trying to escape the, the snow? Well, we left uh, Chicago at zero degrees for this beautiful weather down here in Louisiana, so I'm <laughs> glad to be down here. Now, the ingredients for the boudin are very simple. We have the... Uh, the pork meat that's been cut, this could be shoulder, this could be trimmings, it could be any kind. We want a certain amount of fat uh, in the boudin for moisture. And the liver of the pig, we've taken, uh, now different cultures, more liver, less liver. It's always a big argument about how much liver to put in. But what we want to do is to season our water. Now David, you have a pot of uh, water boiling and you're going to put in the onions first. And we, we use the traditional seasonings, onions. Celery can go in or celery can stay out. Uh, celery, a lot, of, a lot of folks just really don't like to put celery in that boudin, I do. But uh, onions, then we're gonna put the red bell pepper, little specks of color. Yep. Uh, so Hip, do y'all do any similar sausages to boudin like this in uh, Chicago? Is there a traditional meat over there that uh, y'all make sausages with? Well, I mean, there, there's a, a lot of Italians in Chicago, so right. Italian sausage, but as far as blood sausages, not the native to Chicago. There's, there's a lot of cultures up there. There's a lot of merguez, um, or sia that's happening from a lot of different restaurants in Chicago. So the use of blood and sausage is, is definitely there and present. So season the water to taste. We'll come back and, and uh, fix it a little bit, uh, change it, taste it, flavor it more. No herbs and spices, just salt, pepper, and a little garlic. You got that? Yep. Bring that to a good rolling ball on the hip. The rest is simple. Here you have about 20 pounds of good pork meat. Quality meat there. Good quality meat. The liver is all nice and bright and beautiful. The blood will be cooked later over fire. It's already salted. We're going to put it in here and just add a little onions to it. But that's going to come after this meat is tender. Y'all go ahead and put it in. All right. Y'all go and get it in there. That's about 40 pounds of pork going in there. 
and that's gonna cook for about an hour and a half until the meat is tender. Then we're gonna come back to the table and sample to see if it's tender enough in a minute. Cool. So y'all just go ahead and All right. boil it away. See you in a little bit. All right, I tell you, I just wish that y'all could just smell what's going on here uh, between these pots. I can recognize this right right quick. This is a good pot of white beans, and white beans are always part of the uh, the bushery. But I have now, Lou. You came in from uh, from uh, Lafayette, yes, right? Yes, sir. Lafayette, New Iberia. Yes, now, sir. Now tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, what I've been doing for probably the last seven or eight years, I've been mostly. I think my name has become Backbone Stew Lou. <laughs> you know, because when we I go to the, the boucheries, and uh, I, normally my uh, objective is to cook the pork stew to feed. All the cooks. Tell yes, me sir. what's in this pot. Well, we actually started with uh, hog lard. We buy uh, the rendered lard from the hog cracklings, yeah. and then this is what we use to start our roux. And right. then we, and then we, it's so a traditional uh, all-purpose flour, and we cook it down to the brown stage. And once it gets down to the brown stage, we go ahead and add our onions to cook to stop the cooking and, process. And the onions right? are cut very small. They're so very small, yes, yeah. sir. And now tell me what else is going to go into this roux right now. We're going to have. Uh, Onions, bell peppers, celery, and we're going to have the different colors of the bell peppers, but we're also going to throw in the pork backbones. Now, let's see that backbone. Yes, Bring sir. it out here so we can look at sure. it. Now, no. this, now, this is the pork backbone. Yes, sir. And uh, now, the bone is giving all that excess yes. flavor. What I and want to happen is I want that bone, I want all that flavor in that bone to come out and get into that stew. All of this right yes, here. Yes, sir. All and that then you, then you also have the skin left yes, on, sir. right? But yes. look at that meat right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And now this is actually the pork chop. This is, the this pork is chop. actually the loins That's right correct. here. Correct. And then you also have uh, some some smaller pieces we did of the bone smaller here. Smaller pieces, just right. And I noticed you have some yes. smoke sausage there too, some, right? We have some smoke sausage and some andouille that we're going to add into that. So the pork blood we've harvested to, from the pig yes, to sir. go to the boudin table for the red boudin. That's correct. But you've confiscated I some. I confiscated a and, quart. And what does it do to the uh, to, to it the helps, sauce? It helps to thicken the sauce and it also helps to intensify the flavor. Now what about the beans? Tell us, that's a, Bob, a white beans in Louisiana is so historical, traditional. Yes, sir. At every boucherie, I mean, white beans over rice is... So what are you just using navy beans? Yes, sir. We use the little navy navy beans and we cook them down with some ham hocks, smoked yeah. ham hocks, oh, yeah. and smoked neck bones. Wow. And, and so, help to intensify that flavor of that. Yes. So anyway, thank you all for coming to okay. feed the butchers today. Thank you. We enjoy. You're going to be on the cook's tables, and I'll tell you what, everybody's going to forget about this in a minute, and it's going <laughs> to be all about you. Thank you, Lou, for coming thank over you. to all see right, us. John, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Y'all keep on yes. cooking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to eat my sausage. All right, man. Okay, David, uh, the, me the meat has been cooking. You can get that lid off of there. Oh, my God, look at this, look at this. Get a big basket of that up. Now, y'all, this is all of the cube pork that we had a while ago, as well as the liver. It was seasoned nicely, and it went into the pot. Okay, we can bring that over here and just kind of cool off. Okay, guys, now the meat is out of the pot, and we've reserved some of the poaching liquid, which is full of flavor, not only the meat flavor, but also the great onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic that's been cooked in the pot as well. So why don't we go ahead and load some up in here. We've reserved some of the seasoning as well. And hip, you can just go ahead and uh, push it down through that. Just kind of let it, let it go. And we're going to grind it nicely. And you can see that grind. Okay, Larry. The blood? The blood has already been cooked, as you know, so now it's going to go into the boudin. The cooked blood has uh, coagulated. Take a look at that. It's coagulated nicely. It's cooked. It has all the onions and uh, green onions in it. So the blood is now going in for color only. Put a little hot stock in there for me, please. Just about, you can put that whole pot in there and then get me another one. Now, Larry, we're going to slide this pan over and I'm going to let y'all, uh, we're going to start with that. Okay. See, the blood hadn't turned this one red, but you can see the difference in the color between the red and the white boudin. Okay, now we're going to come in with the pork casings. You got the end of it, and you try to get some water in it, because if it has water, it'll slide on the tip. And the water just really greases up the, uh, 
the end of that tip. All right, just keep that nice steady, steady pull. Go ahead, a little faster, a little faster. Keep on going, keep on going. Up oh, there you go. Okay, you see how it's uh, coming together really nicely. It's nice and solid. Coming in, the, the 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 meat is hot. The steam is in the casing. That's why you see it jumping like this. See the steam coming out. Once it goes into the pot of 190 degree water, just to sit and simmer for about 35, 40 minutes. The white and the red can be cooked together in the pot. Then it's taken out and chilled. Okay, y'all can keep on going and do that and we'll come back with the white, okay? Good job. Coming behind you, coming behind you. How y'all doing, guys? Excellent, Chef. How are you girls, today? Huh? How y'all doing? Good, good. How's everything going here, huh? Excellent, Chef. Yourself? Uh, Y'all, I have Mark here. Uh, now, Mark, you and I go way back. We my do. God, all the way to Johnson and Wales yes, University, sir. huh? Yes, sir. Now, you're, Thank you. you are a master butcher. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. you. You also had a thriving business in Chicoutery. Yes. And uh, and that was in Colorado, right? Yes, in sir. Down, Denver. In, in the Denver area. Yeah. Anyway, now, Philadelphia has Scrapple. Yes. Uh, Georgia and Tennessee has South. We have Hogshead Cheese. Is there any other thing in that category? And well, from, from my, my heritage, if you will, in preserving traditions, uh, we would have something that was similar to this, except we wouldn't take it past that. It was called fritole in Calabria. Right. And that was important. It was just boiled boiled pig parts, the ears, the snout. And I grew up with my grandma cooking, cooking the snouts and ears in the kitchen, just a little olive oil, a little water, a little wine, some wow. garlic, and, wow. and we'd eat it with bread. So fritole in Calabria is in the celebration of a new year. And you, you, you cook it in a cauldron like that, and then you pour it over day-old bread. Now, has that been a tradition forever that every part of every animal was consumed? Today, we have such a, a culture of plenty. In those days, I mean, there was absolutely no way any part of that animal would go to waste. Correct. And that's where part of this comes from. Right? Absolutely. Now, tell us what you have here. Okay? So, we've got uh, uh, some quartered uh, head pieces here. Now the, now, the head is cut in half and then... Cut in half and then split. The snout and the teeth and everything are still in. Absolutely. But there's a... Look, look, look at the meat in here. And this fat right here is unbelievable. Absolutely. And the beautiful part of that is the, the, the cheek or the right. guanciale. Oh. I, I call my wife Queen Guancha because she's got <laughs> such cute little cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, now what else? So we have the heads and the jaws. We've got the heads and the jaws. We've got the feet, and they're split mainly because we want to get uh, extract all that at natural jelly or that right, aspic, right. if you will. And that's going to help firm up that liquid, so that when we, when it cools down, it's going to firm up like a, a, a pig jello, right? If you oh, will. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, look, every bit of this is gelatin. Every bit of it. Look at that skin. So this has been cooking for three hours because you knew how long it would take and we wanted to see the finished product. Yeah, exactly. So wanted, And this is the fat. Now you skim that right yes. off of the top of the pot. Yes, sir. And this is pure hog fat. Pure hog fat. Top. It's great for your skin, great moisturizer. Yeah, look at this. Huh? Come on. <laughs> Let's take a look at the pot, y'all, because uh, this is fantastic. And let me move this lid off. Now let's take a look at that for a second. and. And that's a bouquet garni here. There's all kind of herbs and spices that have been put into the, into the, the little bag so it, we, we don't have to fish it out of the pot. Well, you know what? Y'all go ahead and finish it. What a great job you're doing Actually, here. Thank, thank thanks you, for coming Chef. in. Thanks for bringing thanks all for the butchers in, down. too. Amen. Okay, y'all take it out and cool it. We'll come back to see what it looks like. You got it, Chef. Thank good. you. Hey, good guy. Thank good you. job. Thank you. Lou, how are you doing? Hey, John, how uh, are you? Good, I, man, I'll we're doing, you what, we're doing you fantastic. You know, I don't know, the smells are so incredible around here. I don't know what pot to go to next. Now, you've been cooking. Tell us again, remind us of what we're doing here. Okay, what we've actually done, this is a pork backbone. And what right. we did is we we created a root with the duck, with the hog lard, and we've right. created a nice root, and we added our vegetables to it. And then we added a little bit, very intense pork stock, but 
The kicker on this is once we got it sauteing like it should have been, we added a quart of the pork blood from the pig now, that, that we was slaughtered very, this That morning. was extremely interesting yes. that you put the pork blood. You Absolutely. said not only did it thicken, but it flavored. Now, now this is going to be served over rice with yes, the sir. white beans. And Dave, you have, you have the white beans already, so you can put a little green onions in them. And uh, now they're fully flavored with the, with the pork hocks, right? The smoked yes, hocks. This is the surprise of the day right here. Now tell us about that. This is actually something we do, and we, and we try to have creative minds when we do this kind of stuff. What we actually did, it took wild mallard ducks. Mallard ducks out of the of Louisiana. Duck breast, and we, we've taken pork ribs, and we, what we did is actually took a pork butt and sliced it very, very thin. Ah, that okay? became the right. Cut the bones out of it, yeah. season it, and we take this mixture, put it in there, a piece of jalapeno, we take the pork <laughs> butt, wrap it, and then we season them with a pork mafia rub, it's called, and then we wrap them in bacon. Wrap it in bacon, so it's getting larded the whole time it's That's cooking. Correct. You get that nice bacon flavor. Yes. Guys, y'all keep cooking. I'm done. Yeah, hey, look, you, you've done all you need to do here. <laughs> Thank you, you all so much. Yes, Lou, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay, y'all, uh, what y'all got going over here? Y'all got all your meat done? I got, I got huh? my meat done. This is uh, oh, this that's is the cured. A, this huh? is the cured. This is like the chicharrones. This right. is like the uh, like the Spanish, uh, the Spanish uh, crackling right. with a little bit of meat on it versus the thickness of the. Uh, if you look at the at, at the thickness of the two of them, how different they are, and of course this right. is the fresh pork skin. This is the cured. So this is going to go into the pot that has just a little bit oil and water, and, water. and the water is actually going to melt the fat, and the fat will become the lard that right. we're going to use and the later. Gonna boil the crackling out. is the byproduct. Yes. Here you have the cured chicharrones or the skins that's already cured, and it's going to blow up fairly quickly. Right. So y'all ready to go? We're ready to go. Huh? We're ready for it. So Jerry's got a pot here. You want to just drop those in there for us, Jerry, yeah. and see what they look like? Like I said, this this oil this oil is about 350 degrees. Now we have about a cup of water in about a Oh, maybe a cup of grease or so. Yeah. And this is those beautiful. Now, I'm going to pour it around there to keep it from splashing. And uh, that oil is about what? About 350 about degrees? 350 degrees. All right. Well, look, I'm going to leave it up to you. I mean, this is really, this is really nice. It's frying. The water is going to allow the fat to come out of these fresh cracklings exactly. and allow that fat to start developing, which, of course, is the lard. And that's going to be the really fine catch at the end to have a good can of lard on the porch to fry those eggs in the morning. Right. So you're going to take care of this? I got it covered. I got this for you, okay? Yes. I'll tell you, Commissioner, take a look at this nice pig here. Another wild hog from Louisiana. Chef, isn't this huh? beautiful, huh? Man, it really isn't that is. incredible? Look at, the, uh, look, at the, look at the fat on that. You can smell that oh, cooking. Oh, you can smell all the way to you the can bring some, brings back some memories, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, a great cochon de lait pit here. I built this many, many years ago, and I tell you, you can't imagine how many pigs have come out I of here. I tell you, it's doing a tremendous job. I was looking to see if I could get some ideas. <laughs> Y'all, Commissioner of Agriculture, Mike Strain, we've been friends for so long. I mean, I, I don't even, well... Long before long you, time. yeah, long, 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 time. long before you were Mike Strain, we knew each other. <laughs> That's right. We've been celebrating food and culture. You know, we're here, we're here with this. It's a wonderful boucherie. Isn't this you know, nice? Isn't that's it a nice? family tradition in my family. We would have large boucheries where all the family would get together, start early in the morning, you know, and start butchering and then go through processing the meat and, and handing it out, you know, to all the family members. You know, it's really a Cajun tradition. Now, this is a wild pig. This is a, a, a wild boar from the swamps of Louisiana. Today we're doing domestic pig, but here's a wild boar, almost 200 pounds. What's happening here? Because I didn't know we could go into the swamps of Louisiana, get a hog out, Absolutely. and sell you know, it in a restaurant. I was What's a teenager happening? before I ever saw a store-bought pork chop. So yeah. you got to think about that. Yeah, sure. And now we have, we need to harvest almost a half a million pigs a year out of the swamps and out of the lands. Just of feral hogs. Feral hogs to keep that population in check. We have an overpopulation. And think about this, 200 pounds here. Think about how much meat and food products are out in those swamps. So we're working on programs, where there are capture programs, where we use you know, these with pens and other things, and also now where this goes to a state-inspected slaughter now facility. That's the and secret then right That's there, the right? secret, and it can be sold into commerce. And you wanna, you wanna know what total organic is, right? It's feral pigs.
That's one mighty fine pig. Yeah, he's been cooking for 24 hours. <laughs> in, injected with garlic butter, mm -hmm. rubbed in cane syrup and brown sugar, two good Louisiana products, and got them all rubbed down in there and put in the, put over the, the wood fires. What a wonderful I tell you, what a beautiful flavor. Such a good time. Yeah, right? oh, absolutely. Well, All right, Tank, take a look at this, man, huh? One wow. Of my favorite dishes. Uh, now, hey, guys, how are y'all? Afternoon, John. How are you? Everybody's working away Good here, shot. man. Oh, I tell you, look at, look at that shoulder right there, huh? Today, we have great community members that came from Sodexo, some of the great chefs in New York. We have Travis Johnson with us as well. The, the idea here is to take the liver, to take the kidneys, to take the heart, and to take the tongue and cut them all into... Uh, pieces that can then be braised or be boiled to liquid. Well, let's take a look and go sure. put it down in there. What about seasoning? Is it already seasoned? Already seasoned. Okay. Well, yeah. let's go. We're going to put a little sure. scallions and, and parsley in there and kind of get it done. Stock went into it or the stock was created with the, with the, the uh, meats? Created the stock from some of the tongue and some of the earlier prep. And then also after we got done uh, braising the meats, we deglazed the pan with a little beta amber. And <laughs> <laughs> a little beer went and then into finished the it <laughs> and uh, brought off all those flavors and aromatics. And well, again, well, that went back Well, in. you know, it's just absolutely fantastic. And I love the size of all of these little cuts, the colors that go into the pot, because this is debris. Yeah. I better make yeah, sure it's not poison. You go ahead and taste yeah. that, let's see what happens. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Mm. That's it. <laughs> Kiss the butcher, kiss the baker, huh? No, this is fantastic. Look, while you finish this off, and I want to go catch up with these guys and find out what they're doing, so you can keep handling that stew right there, okay? Thank you, Chef. Oh, the pork catters, one of my favorite dishes. How y'all doing, guys? Fantastic. How about you, Chef? Good, good. We're doing fantastic. Now, this is the pork catter. Pork catter. And the pork catter is the pork shoulder seasoned and rolled into the center of the pork belly. And then the pork belly will be tied off around the shoulder, and then it'll be roasted in a slow, slow oven. But it could it could go anywhere from 24 hours if you wanted it to, and this is the way. So tell us what uh, what you've done with the hash marks. Yeah, walk us through. Well, it. I think so. So what we're do what we've done is we've cut some hash marks through the uh, pork belly. Oh, but not through the skin. Not all the way all... through. You only want to go about a half an inch through. It gives you it gives you more coverage of all of your seasonings. The seasonings, right? And the key seasonings in porchetta are your garlic, black pepper fennel. It's all those traditional Italian see, you know, yeah, herbs right, that right. You're, you're accustomed to. Now, now you've done the same season here and you split that shoulder in half. This was a shoulder. This was a pork shoulder. You took your knife and split it in half the butterfly it, and now you're rubbing in all these seasonings in, Matt? Yes. Mm -hmm. And all seasoned salt, pepper, granulated garlic? Yep. Okay, y'all got some string anywhere over there? We got there? string over here. Okay, you ready to go? Okay, Matt, why don't you just fold that up and I'm going to take it. Now we're going to season the outside. We won't season the bottom of this roast because it's going to Sorry. sit in this bed of tremendous seasoning. And it's going to pick up all the seasoning in the bottom. But then a little kosher salt, a little pepper. Remember, this is going to cook for a long time. So these seasonings in the fat of the meat is just going to really pour these seasonings out. A little bit of the granulated garlic like that. We can put some fresh herbs on top. And of course, always crushed peppercorns. You ready? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna take that skin and roll it over. You're gonna roll over that little package. Now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, Matt. I'm gonna let you slip in where I am. Y'all gonna tie it up, cause I gotta go check crackling. Yes, sir. <laughs> I tell you what, man, y'all did a good job here. Let me tell you we something. We are gonna enjoy this. this. Y'all, this reminds <laughs> me of my baby picture. You talk about beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is another thing. Oh, this is another. Oh, Jerry's uh, cracklings are coming out. Now, look at now. How long have these actually been frying in here? Actually, we put them in at about 12:30, so they've been in approximately one hour. An hour. Wow. And they cook that fast. And they cook that and, fast. Uh, now you're putting them on cardboard over there just to drain the excess just to, fat. Just to drain the excess fat. Now, are you sprinkling anything on that? Or? I put a little bit. Now it's already seasoned, but we add a little extra. Oh, Usually, I do a good little blend. Oh, and it's not too much of it, because you don't want to get it too salty or anything. How do you like them? I think you've hit a home run. This is really great. Jerry, that's fantastic. 
He's a great crackling, Jerry. Thanks yeah, so much, man. Right. Save that lard. I want a can of it, all right? right? Huh? We're gonna good. Get it. We need a good Thank can. You. Boy, look at the spread oh, here. Oh, look at the spread. Look at the talk about the spread of the boucherie. Uh, David Bancroft here from Auburn, Alabama. I'll tell you what, what a day it's been at the boucherie, hadn't it? Absolutely. Now, what is your interest? I mean, you brought this from uh, Alabama with you. You've made this all yourself, and you have this beautiful leg here. Tell us a little bit about what you have here while I, while I eat. Well, you know, obviously what we're seeing is, is, is Tank, I got you some ham too, brother, man. <laughs> Thank you, now. But, you know, what you're seeing all across the South, there's so much storytelling that happens at the table. And, and through that, it's our ancestry, our heritage, our roots, our culture. Um, and, and a lot of that's lost in, in my generation. And so as a chef, you know, my team and my restaurant, we really focus on on trying to connect back to our food. And every, every one of the meats I actually carry its own story about how it was made, where it came from, what the pig ate, and all mm -hmm. of these things, right? Different farmer, different story, different breed, different cross, right, right. different reason, uh, you know, reason for the season. We were butchering this, it was eating and foraging in the fields during summertime. We made this kind of salami with it or, and, and vice versa. Now tell us what you have beginning right here, then we'll end up with the ham. Tell us what you have here. And so most of this was made out of the same pig except for obviously the two-year-old ham, but this one here is a, a Tuscan salami, a classic Genoa salami. Beautiful, beautiful. So you got the copa here. Look at this. Look this at is a copa. Uh, look at that inner mushroom. Uh, yeah, that. it's almost like you painted it on with a brush. It huh? looks like somebody took a white paintbrush and just threw fluffs <laughs> throughout it. Uh, and this uh, is a copa. Copa, 120 days old. So tell us about the leg that you have here. And so obviously this is my, you know, the, the piece de resistance <laughs> here for me from Alabama. So so this one here, we, we got in about April of 2014. We salted it classically like your prosciutto. At 12 months aging, we took it down and we cold smoked it. Wow. Uh, and so after after two months of cold smoking, or two weeks, then we rehung it for 10 months, just shy of two years. And that's so, what you guys are so seeing this, here. So this ham has been hanging for two years that we're gonna taste right now. But I love, you, you take this and, and you always see Europeans when they're eating or just, just older generations, and they turn that head and they lay this over their tongue and warm that up, almost like M&Ms. It doesn't <laughs> melt in your mouth. <laughs> and you let it bloom on your tongue and you pick the salt up on the front of the mm. palate and really get the, the subtle really nuances mean. of that ham. And Incredible. then it finishes sweet. Mm, incredible. Well, I'll tell you, David, this is great, great, great work. This ham is, for you to take a ham that you've been nursing for over two years, and bring it here for us to enjoy today at the Boucherie, to share your tradition and your growing tradition with us is very special. These meats are fantastic. So we're gonna come back and eat some in a little bit. So thank yes, you sir. so much for being here with us, okay? Thank you, Give sir. everybody in Alabama sir. a hug, thank except you. the football team, all right? We're eagle. Huh? Do that part. <laughs> All right, Mark, we're back at the table of the hogshead cheese. When we were here earlier, we went to the big pot. Everything was steaming and boiling. I Absolutely. mean, that, that fat on the head of the pig, I could, could put your finger through. So where have we been since then? So what we've done is we've picked all the meat and taken out any of the hard cartilage or bone. And we don't want to chew on that, and especially it wouldn't go through our grinder here. So what we did is we took some of the meat, we picked it off, kind of threw it to the grinder to, to mix it up a little bit and give it a nice texture. Right, right. So then what we're going to do after we've done all that, we've boiled it, we've got some salt, uh, some cayenne for a little heat, and of course representative of, of Louisiana. Right, right? sure. And uh, some uh, herbs, we've got some thyme and some parsley in there for color. We've got some vegetable that we put in for color, as well as a little bit of texture. And as we mix this, we're going to have what's called random garnish. So every slice we get is going to have, have a nice, throat. pretty color uh, and texture now, to now, it. Now, while you sprinkle a little seasoning in, 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 in there, normally, in, in the, you make hogshead cheese, mm -hmm. Uh, normally it's parsley and thinly sliced green onions going at the end. Very seldom all the red and green and yellow bell right, pepper, not right? Right, so much red. Huh? So, what, so, so what, what's different in what you've seen here today than what's happening in Eunice? It's, it's got a little bit more Creole flair to it, so like the red definitely isn't there. Yeah. And the, the bell pepper usually goes in at the beginning. Right, and in, in the water as, it's, as right. it has the cooking. So the only thing that you usually add at the end is parsley and green Right, onion. and that nice clear right. gel on top of exactly. it as well, huh? 
and I'm going to hand this one down to you so you can flatten it out. Now, we put about 50% so that we can uh, can put enough of the, uh, the, the gelatinized liquid in there. And that liquid is fully, fully flavored, too. Really full flavor because the, the, the season hog has to feed everything where, where full season and the stock was as well. Now, this right here is a, a secret of the Italians more Grazie. so more so than the Cajuns, but tell us about this. So this here is a method of preservation, uh, similar to confit, where you cook, cook uh, slow cook uh, meat for a long time and then cover it in its own fat. In essence, what we're creating is it, it, its own seal, uh, kind of the old world version of what they call a, a, a cryovac machine, right, right. where they suck out all the air so you take out that element of bacterial uh, in, in, uh, growth and whatnot. So what we want to do is, once these chill a bit, they get all gelled. And nice and we solid. want to do a nice layer of fat on top, and that fat's going to solidify and create a barrier. But you know what? In Louisiana, you don't have to worry about how long you preserve it. This stuff will be gone that, pretty exactly. fast. Exactly. Uh, we're not worried about preservation. No, no, uh, no, no not no, in this instance. It'll be gone too fast to preserve anything. That's, that's exactly right. So anyway, great, great job y'all did today. Thanks so much, huh? Anyway, thank you. Yeah, I tell you you've done such you. a fabulous job with all of your team today. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank anyway, y'all, we're gonna move on out. Uh, let's get this in the cooler for chilling. We don't have long to eat here. Amen. Huh? Now, Tank, this is what it's been all about today, right? Look at the bounty. This is the spoils of the boucherie. Okay. We've seen all that classic meat. We've seen all that beautiful uh, 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 mold-covered meat over here that's in classic restaurants. But this is what the southern hog farmer, the southern families have been chasing for generations. Here's our white boudin. And you see this boudin has been kind of roasted in an oven. You can just poach it. Here's the red boudin. This right here, remember that ponce we stuffed? Oh yeah. That stomach of the pig? This I uh, went into the smokehouse. And this is stuffed with the sausage that we made with our smoked sausage earlier. We put the fresh sausage in it. And then of course we went ahead and stuffed it. You can see, uh, look at that. Mm. The showdown, the showdown as we call it right here, the ponce is the stomach. And but when the you, showdown is cooked when you, when, you, when you stuff the stomach, That's the cool. ponce, this becomes the showdown. Sure and look at here. Look at the head cheese. Look at the head cheese right here. Mm. Look at that right there. The head cheese, uh, uh, Mark and his team were making this earlier today. And of course, if it sits mm. in the sun, it's gonna start to melt. But how's that flavor? Wow. Oh, Isn't so that good? good. Mm. Pork yeah. belly. This is candied pork belly. Right here, the skin is on the side, the belly. Take a look at this. Uh, it's been cured. We put in a cure, a brown sugar and cane syrup, Louisiana cane syrup cure. Then we put it in a slow oven. This is the whole pork belly that's been uh, put in a brine for 72 hours, dried off, covered with brown sugar and cane syrup in a 200 degree oven for about uh, 12, 15 hours. And here are the sausages that we made. We had the, uh, the two different sausages. We had the 55 millimeter pork uh, beef casing Remember this one? Oh, yeah. Heavily smoked under pecan wood, oak, a little bit cherry if you want to. Fruit woods, we love fruit woods, a little persimmon. And then, of course, this is the Louisiana smoked sausage. So, tank, hog crackling is the only thing left. Hmm? You had some of these, huh? I think I will again. Yeah, just have another one. The hog crackling, of course, is mm. uh, kind of the end of the day. This is the snack food. Everybody would go home with a little bag of this. They'd eat it all the way down the road. And it's another month or so of great boucherie making in Louisiana. It's a tradition we can't lose, isn't it? Thank you so much for having um, me. Look, thank you so much. And I thank all of you for stopping and visiting with us today because preserving traditions is so important in Louisiana and in your own culture, no matter where you are. Somewhere in your area is the uniqueness of your butchers. This is ours. So you go out and find them and keep those children learning every single day because that's what it's all about. You never want to lose traditions and we're certainly not going to do it. We're going to eat. Come on, Tank. Well, our deal was you're going to bring me a pig and I'm going to give you a pig to take back. Sure. So we did a little swapping. Next year we're going to do them for the bush raid. 
And I tell you, I think I won out on that deal. I now, you know, look, wait, I'm gonna give you wait. that little. I'm gonna give you that little. Uh, where's my little black Where? one? Whoa, whoa, where, where's my pig? Where's the pig? Where's my pig? That, huh? And are you kidding me? You brought that pig all the way she's gotten out of here? I didn't train her come, to go come back on, to Carolina. Man. Come on, man. Come on. She had to take off over here. Come on.